As a background to today's discussion, the PI3K are a family of lipid kinases that sit at the crossroads of numerous signaling events that drive many malignancies, including certain lymphomas and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. There are four isoforms of the PI3K, alpha, beta, delta, and gamma. Isoform-specific inhibitors are attractive because they may lead to efficacy without the toxicity of pan inhibitors. Idelizumab, which is a delta isoform inhibitor, was the first PI3K inhibitor to be approved for lymphoma and CLL. The delta isoform is of particular interest in B-cell malignancies because its expression is normally restricted to cells of hematopoietic origin, and data from gene knockout models show that it has a key role in B-cell signaling, development, and survival. Selective targeting of the delta isoform should not alter insulin signaling, which is mediated by the ubiquitously expressed alpha isoform. However, narrow targeting could lead to mechanisms of resistance through upregulation of other isoforms. This has been demonstrated in mantle cell lymphoma, where the alpha isoform is expressed in relapsed patients. Duvalisib is a dual inhibitor of both the delta and gamma isoforms of the PI3K. Inhibiting the gamma isoform may be important because of its inhibitory effect not only on the malignant cell, but also on the microenvironment, which provides important survival signals to malignant cells. Both idelalisib and copanlisib, an inhibitor of the delta and alpha isoforms, are currently FDA-approved for third-line flicker center cell lymphoma, and idelalisib is approved in combination with rituximab and relapsed CLL. On September 24, 2018, the Food and Drug Administration granted approval for duvalisib for patients with relapsed or refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia, small lymphocytic lymphoma, and follicular lymphoma after at least two prior therapies. The approval of duvalisib in CLL was based on the DUO trial, a large international randomized phase three trial comparing duvalisib at 25 milligrams orally twice daily to ofatumab given according to the package label. The results of the DUO trial have been published in blood. In a subset analysis of 196 patients receiving at least two prior therapies, the median progression-free survival was 16.4 months in the duvalisib arm and 9.1 months in the ofatumab arm with a hazard ratio of 0.40. The overall response rate of 78% with dubilisib was twice the 39% seen with ofatumumab. The follicular lymphoma indication is based on the DYNAMO trial, a single-arm, multi-center trial of dubilisib, which enrolled 83 patients with follicular lymphoma who were refractory to rituximab and to either chemotherapy or radioimmunotherapy. The overall response rate, determined by an independent response committee, was 42%. Of the 35 responding patients, 15 or 43% maintain responses for at least six months, and six or 17% maintain responses for at least 12 months. The most common adverse reactions with an incidence of greater than or equal to 20% were diarrhea or colitis, neutropenia, rash, fatigue, pyrexia, cough, nausea, upper respiratory tract infection, pneumonia, musculoskeletal pain, and anemia. Over the last decade, we've seen substantial advances in the treatment of low-grade lymphoma and CLL, especially in the frontline setting. Unfortunately for patients with relapse and refractory disease, outcomes are poor and new agents are needed. The approval of duvalisib is an important addition to our armamentarium for these patients and will have an immediate impact. However, to have its greatest effect, strategies will need to be devised to move this drug earlier in the natural history of these diseases. Such approaches might include alternative dosing and scheduling, as well as combination regimens. Duvalisib is a novel PI3K inhibitor and is differentiated from other PI3K inhibitors because it targets both the delta and gamma isoforms. Consequently, it is being studied in a broader array of diseases, including T-cell malignancies, where promising activity has been seen. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the ASCO University Weekly Podcast. For more information on drug approvals, visit the comprehensive e-learning center at university.asco.org.